Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Zhong Quan Chen, and you can just call me CK. Yeah, so it's our first time to get, uh, come to JSEC for sharing our research. So I'm very happy and honored to come here uh, to share our research on a conference that focus on the blue team and security analysis. So today our research topic is about uh, uh, several China's uh, attack to uh, Taiwan's uh, financial semiconductor. And this incident is somehow related to the uh, financial sector. So today's our topic is demystifying the China supply chain attack targeting financial sector. And uh, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm CK Chen and my uh, uh, ID in the Twitter is Bletchley13. If you are uh, willing, you can just my, uh, just my, uh, join my Twitter. And currently I'm a security researcher, uh, research director in Sycraft and responsible for organizing our research team and our interim uh, project. And I am also a member of the HICOM and HICOM Review Board. So if you are, have any idea to cooperate with the Taiwan's community, uh, HICOM, um, and welcome to uh, uh, tell me. Okay. And uh, my partner, Ms. Jin, uh, Jen, uh, is a senior security analyst in Cycraft. Uh, his daily job to, is to analyze uh, these incidents uh, uh, we monitor every day. Okay. So uh, here is our today's outline. We will first give an introduction about the background on the supply chain and some uh, background of our financial sectors. And then we will uh, classify the supply chain attack into four types uh, of different kind of attack. And during here, we have two types of attack. Uh, isolate hopping attack and vulnerability in supplier software. In these two types, we have discussion about, uh, two incidents that uh, we have discovered in the re uh, past two years. And the last, we will give some conclusion to, uh, summarize why, uh, this will happen in the financial sector. And in last, we also share some of our experience to enhance supply chain security. Okay. So why we start this research is because uh, in this recent two year, we have um, observed that there are more and more cyber attack from China's director targeting uh, financial sectors. So we start to track in this kind of uh, uh, incidents. And among these incidents, there are four uh, high impact incidents that catch our attention. Uh, why we want to share these four incidents? Because these four incidents, uh, they finally result in uh, some financial crime or the very concrete financial damage. And uh, the threat of this four attack is highly related to China's director. Yeah, so in this presentation, we will also share and analyze the director's mover, technique, and tactic. Yeah, and before we enter the, our case study, uh, we share, uh, we start from a small news. Yeah, maybe some of you already uh, noticed this news in the last year. The U.S. House Speaker uh, Nancy Pelosi has visited Taiwan, and uh, because Taiwan has a very tension relationship between Taiwan and China, so China have a very aggressively reaction uh, to uh, this event. So this event also uh, influenced Chinese hacker trying to attack Taiwan's uh, government. So there are some Taiwan's organization has been uh, hacked. So, for example, you can see the picture in the uh, right. There are two screens that are be hacking by a Chinese hacker. Yeah. Uh, but however, in this uh, in this period, uh, in our visibility, we found that several governments and the academic in institutes has been compromised. But most attack is stay on the application level, like the defacement or DDoS level. Uh, we not yet see to uh, aggressive attack like uh, cyber espionage and uh, infra destroy attack in, in this moment. And we also monitor there are some, uh, uh, there are uh, in some uh, hacker community in China that encourage their uh, member, their hacker members to attack Taiwan's uh, government. Yeah. And one of them is interesting, they call themselves as AP27. But however, we think they are, they are the fake one. But why we want to mention this uh, this one is because they really do some attack and leak some information. Uh, one of the victims is the FISC, uh, which is a financial uh, a company in Taiwan, and their partial source code was leaked during this event. 
and we have trying to uh, analyze this event, and we think that uh, this is not uh, this company FISTC is directly to being compromised is because uh, uh, the outsourcer who develop uh, this uh, system is being compromised, so the uh, source code is leaked. So why we want to introduce this case because this belongs to one kind of our supply chain attack. Uh, in the uh, here, the data leak from the outsource outsourcers. Yeah. So I think we, this is one problem of the uh, supply chain attack. And beside this one, we also classify the other three type of the supply chain attack, and we divide this four type of attack from the two uh, direction. The first one is a initial compromise entity, and the second one is a fast being compromised. Yeah. And uh, for example, if we, your developer, uh, we further dip, uh, we further divide the supplier into two rules. The one is a developer, the other one is a service provider. So the more classical one, like the shuttle hammer and solar winds, is that the more is implanted in the software during the develop phase. But uh, I want to uh, highlight one thing is that the service provider is much more important in nowadays. Yeah, so they are indispensable. You may need this vendor to help you to install the software, uh, maintain the software, and configure the software. So they have some right to touch your IT system. So they are the one possible attack vector for you. So this one is belong to an isolated hopping attack. Yeah, and uh, we also have had the other ones of vulnerability in the supplier's software. And uh, later we will introduce several instances. So to remind something uh, earlier that uh, every uh, week to protect the, vic the victim's uh, privacy and their identity, we replace every victim's name, server name, and use account name uh, to something in the Star Wars to protect their identity. So, uh, this slide is non-representative and only for il uh, illustration purpose. And I will put the mark like this one to tell you that something in this page is being redacted. Okay. So let's move on the type one, Iceland hopping attack. So in this case, is that the director first compromise some trust entities. These entities could be your service provider. So like your subsidiaries and your overseas branch is somehow one kind of service provider. They provide some ser service to your main company. And also the service provider and also is belong to this tracked entity. And this entity will be utilized as a jump site to intrude the final target. So uh, in this type, we have discovered uh, two uh, incidents in the financial sector. And uh, the one, the first one is a buy force, and the second one is a operation catch panda. And uh, later, our analyst uh, Minsky will help us to introduce uh, these two cases in more detail. So let's welcome Minsky. Okay, now I would like to talk to you about the case one buy force is back. And the, the instant background is the financial companies. Antivirus has detected some malware on the internal transaction system. And the SOC also detects a large number of failed logon events. And then the customer, they want to know how the malicious software was deployed. And so we were request to perform instant response. And the, the supply chain in this instance, we found the thread editor use the VPN of the vendor and the execute malicious files and attacking other financial company in the same group. And, uh, and the next, we will talk about the kill chain and the TTP in this instance. This is a, this is a storyline of this instance. There are three main uh, attack paths and uh, we will Introduction uh, after. And uh, first, we will talk about the number one and the number two attack pace. And the endpoint servers DARISA repeatedly use the account admin and the administrator for brute force logon attempt. 
and uh, successfully logging the server is on to with the administrator account. And uh, we believe the attack has now gained the uh, administrator privilege. And uh, the, finally, the number three attack pass. Therefore, the attacker can perform later movement with administrator privilege. In server S O N two is a uh, uh, server S O N two is an important endpoint for a taker. The attacker used RDP and the PS execute for later movement and the stream malware from this endpoint. So the S O C detail the num uh, so we describe the S O C detail a num a large number of file attack and the uh, and he might detail some malware because in this uh, endpoint. Uh, because the attackers bring the malware in this endpoint. And then now my focus will on this important endpoint for the attacker. The auto, the local administrator login the RDP to execute a statue file and the imply the Beidou, a malicious deal of file. The Beidou DLO was reduced as an auto-run service, allowing to automatically start after the system reboot. And then the DLO Beidou we identified as the, as by force. And then when the by force is running, it will come into the C2 server. And then let's focus on the three source in the storyline. The antivirus has a love for some malware in this endpoint. So you can see we list uh, two malware is an uh, antivirus alert. And uh, the endpoint not below to the victim's organization, a uh, features company, but below to the security company. And these two companies below to the same financial holding group. After this, uh, and uh, this endpoint is operation by the, ven by the vendor. Finally, we confirm the thread source from a VPN IP assigned to the vendor and the execute the malicious file, substantially attacking other financial company in the same group. So this is a full story of this instance. The attacker used the vendor's VPN to log into the endpoint managed by the vendor and the gained access to the internal network to carry out the attack. Next, we will talk about the BIFOST. And th this is the flaw and the architecture of BIFOST. BIFOST loader will first start with the service and uh, execute the service main function to read the payload. And uh, when, in the reward, and uh, there are several data, uh, about the by force, such as uh, load the payload and the uh, pass running the bay door and the check the security pro check and checking is this endpoint, is this uh, the security product process? If he detail the security product process, the by force malware will stop and uh, finally connect to, connecting to the C2 server and the command the control. The loader, the BIFOS loader will decrease the payload with mutex RC4 algorithm. Not only the payload is increased, but the configuration in the loader is also increased with the mutex RC4. And the, the loader decrease the payload as the DLO files and the execute it in memory. And the, he will pass the P Payload P hit the copy the station to the memory, pass a library in import table and the load and the relocation. Finally jump to, jump to the entry point of the DL and the running the beta. When BIOS is running, it will transmit the host information to the C2 server, including the written IT, computer name, user name, and the version number, we think this is the BIFOS version number. 
and the process ID and the, the host's language. Once, once the malware connects to the C2 server, we will perform corresponding malicious behavior based on the response from the C2 server, such as search fire, write fire, or create a process. Bifos were often used by Braytech and widely targeted Taiwan and Japan. And the Bifos itself were also discovered in Japan recently. So we, this is a stray source from Twitter and the uh, research discovered the Bifos, uh, ELF, uh, ELF Bifos recently. And uh, this is a summary of the of advisory techniques based on the MITRE ATT and the CK framework. And uh, this is LC we found in this, this instance. And the uh, next, I would like to share test to the operation catch panda. And this is instance background. Uh, a number of security traders and uh, financial company suspect online transaction due to the cyber attack. Investigation realized that the attack was due to password mismanagement and the video st staff staffing attack. However, the funding were not conclusive and uh, may have been other cost. Operation Catch Panda is a long-term APT target Taiwan and Japan. High confidence of China creator and also association with TF410 and the C2 domains overlapping to APT10. And the, the Operation Panda utilizes reliability in B surprise applications. And the supply chain in this instance, the attacker is prod, is prod the web service variability of the software system manager interface. And the system is used by most Taiwan financial, at most financial company in Taiwan. The attacker also use the VPN of a supplier, of a supplier jump to the returns intranet. Following the news and the cyber threat intelligence source, is now that a number of security traders have been hacked. And we will talk about the QL chain and the TTP in this instance. Uh, because we have disclosure detail in Hikon and uh, we publish uh, this white paper we publish in our website. So we only briefly introduce this instance today. So you can scan the QR code to our web website to see the for more the details. And uh, this is a storyline of the instance. The creator attack web application developed by the vendor. And uh, the application is dedicated for financial purpose and uh, has common injunction vulnerabilities. The attacker establishes tunnel through web, through the web application and uh, use RDP for lateral movement and the family execute database manager tools to dump data. And in other case, the security broker is the same, in the same financial holding group is compromised first. And then the VPN of security brokers was used to log, log into the bank. And this is the overview of the malware fraud and the architecture we analysis in this instance. And uh, the presentation, first the presentation, presentation cache is uh, loaded. Its main purpose is low, is download the beta from the file server. And uh, the beta is executed and uh, you will ingest the malicious share code to other processes such as IE processes or 
or NSI ESC process, and uh, finally it will connect to the C2 server. And then um, another uh, if you need more details, you also can see the uh, scan the QR code to see the more details in our website. And uh, this is why we also expect us to conduct the other research, which we will present in the JSEC later. And the uh, case no, and the uh, no member attack were originally attributed to password miss manager and the uh, credential staffing attack. However, instant response helped us to discover some APT attack. In this instance, we found two weaknesses in supply chain. Uh, number, uh, first is the reliability of the financial software be used. And the second is the VPN of supplier is used as a jump site. And this instance may not as simple as the criminal starving attack. We disclosure other possibility, APT from TF410. And uh, this is a summary of the ATT and CK in this instance. And uh, this is the IOC we found in this instance. And uh, the all the IP is in many from location in Hong Kong. And the next station, I would like to hand over to CK to introduce type two supply chain attack, vulnerability in supply software. Oh, okay, so it's come back to my turn. So now we will introduce the second type uh, of the supply chain attack, the vulnerability in supplier software. Yeah, so it located in this position, uh, by, in our, uh, classification method. So for this type, it's very trivial that the take may first seek of the vulnerabilities in, uh, uh software de developed by a, a big supplier. And if this software is used in the, uh, the same industry and widely used by many, uh, companies, then, uh, the taker can easily utilize this vulnerability to target several victims. So for our instance, we also discover uh, two financial instances that belong to this type uh, of, of uh, problem. So the credit card leak and the source code stolen. So here we start the K3, the credit card leak in Bank of R Group. And uh, this incident has happened in the last year, uh, April. And uh, Bank of R Group um, found the unusual credit card leak and they think they are, uh, they are made related to their uh, IT infra is being compromised. So they ask us to do the face forensic to analyze some endpoint in their system. So we first review the credit card uh, application flow, and then we find out that uh, there are already have several endpoints being compromised. So, so at first, we just quick uh, briefly, there is a sketch of their infra. So we just summarize the infra. So in, in this infra, uh, they have um, one important uh, endpoint called a uh, uh, credit card AP. Uh, this uh, AP is used to uh, handle all the requests of a new credit card. And uh, this part have a two source, one from a, a mobile app and the other one from a web app. And uh, the request here will, will dispatch uh, to the other two point, the CVV2 verifier and the transaction authentication, yeah, to verify the transaction. And if everything is okay, the final, uh, credit card information will be saved into a database server. Okay. So, uh, from this structure, we can, uh, uh, we can observe that the most important endpoint here is this one, CCAP and the DB server. Okay, so we let, later we will introduce the attack step, but however, in, we just quickly summarize this step, the summary about the supply chain in this incident. So why this incident is related to the supply chain is because, uh, the credit card management system that we just showed previous slide have a vulnerability. And, uh, this system is developed by their own supplier. Uh, not too many financial companies use it. Yeah, but however, one thing very strange during we do the uh, investigation is that uh, the taker is like they already know uh, where the vulnerability is. 
they do not spend uh, too much time to uh, send some payload to discover vulnerability. They directly know where is the vulnerability and directly log in and directly send a payload and pound the server. So we seen that, yeah, uh, maybe this source code or the vulnerability is already leaked somewhere. So the attacker can directly use it. Yeah. So next we will uh, more detail to introduce the, uh, the whole storyline and the TTP. So here is the whole storyline. Uh, the attacker first exploit the vulnerability in the web app. Yeah. Then afterward, he led a movement to the CCAP. Uh, server and uh, furthermore to do a little movement to the DB and other uh, endpoint. So here we can notice that it match our assumption the attacker want to attack DB server and CCAP, which is a, a quick, which play a critical role during the uh, credit card flow. Okay. So for the first step, yeah, in the first step, uh, in fact, there are the other problem is misconfiguration. Uh, the IT staff in uh, their in the victim tell us that uh, this testing uh, system should only be accessed by the internal network. But however, we review the web log, find out some IP in the public network, and we also trying to testing it, and we can successfully connect to this testing server. So there are some misconfiguration here, and uh, as a testing server, uh, they. In most of the time, they only set a very weak password. So the attacker can easily get the password and log on to this testing uh, server. And in this server, they have the other vulnerability uh, for file upload. So the director exploit this vulnerability and upload the web show called 1.spx, uh, which is a .NET uh, web show and have a dynamic code loading uh, functionalities. So here is the web show we find. Uh, it's a one line web show and the mutated version of behind the web show. And behind the web show is the web frame, uh, web show framework that are widely used in China's director. So that's in, this increase the possibility that this text is come from China. And after the web show is implemented, uh, the director, uh, use the py stinker and proxy.spx to uh, construct the tunnel uh, and bridge the intranet and the C2 server. Yeah, and next we also uh, discover some activity in the CCAP server. In this server, we found that a malware called uh, TS Windows MD64. Uh, this malware is implemented in GoLand and has some uh, recon functionality like FTP, Semba, and NC. And WMI. So this tool is, is mostly used for the recon. And the, we also discovered some tool used for the privilege, uh, privilege escalation, like the Prince Proofer. Yeah. And their main backdoor use in this instance is a couple strike. And we found a couple strike in the several, uh, endpoint. Yeah. And their couple strike is being obfuscated by the other tool called, uh, Hoshino. Yeah. And this tool can generate a uh, show code to bypass the antivirus. And as you can see, this tool is also, uh, developed by some, uh, Chinese, uh, uh, maybe it's a, a China's mem member. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in the end, the attacker gain to a database server and use a SQL to access the database. So therefore, I think, uh, have evidence for here, we can summarize that this is a possible way for the credit card leak. Yeah. And uh, here is the uh, summarize of the MITRE attack framework. And we also have some IOC list here. Yeah. Okay, so next, let's go to the uh, final case study, the source code stolen. And this instance is happened in the, uh, August last year. And uh, the bank, of course, ask us for assistance to analyze some uh, attack. And uh, similar, uh, this incident is also related to some, their security trading platform uh, has some vulnerability and being uh, compromised as an initial access point. And um, uh, yeah, uh, this platform is a 
developed uh, developed by one of the big suppliers in Taiwan. So uh, in this attack, it affects a lot of vendors in Taiwan. Okay. So next, we will uh, more deeply to go through the cyber kill chain and TTP. So the attacker first compromise, uh, use a SQL injection to compromise a public facing server and then uh, use this as a jump site to compromise the other internal web server use a command injection and then use the schedule task and PSSQ to do a little movement. Okay, so here is uh, the SQL injection part. The attacker uses SQL injection to attack uh, their trading web platform. And here is our execution event. And we can see the process tree here. Here uh, in the central is the SQL server. And the SQL server spawn a lot of command line. And one of the command line further create a process of the partial. So this is a general sign of a SQL injection attack. And uh, we also discover the uh, the other web show, and this time is a uh, query process come from Tomcat and create a command line and do something uh, bad. Yeah. Okay. So in this attack, uh, the attacker used to tunneling tool. The first one is a NPS, which is an open source tool, and the second one is X.DLL. And uh, we also list the command line that we monitor in here. The most interesting uh, attack in this uh, in this incident is about credential dumping. Uh, the attacker utilized uh, a legitimate, uh, legitimate tool called uh, AV dump, uh, which is a tool for inside uh, Avast. Uh, use this tool to dump the uh, LSAS process memory and try to extract the password from this dump. And also they use the mimic cards to, yeah, to harvest the password. So using some tool in the, uh, uh, antivirus and to dump the, uh, process memory is something we think is, uh, unique in this attack. And here are some post exploitation activities, uh, in this attack. And one of these activities that we discover the attacker use the, uh, 7-zip to compress some directory. So we discussion about, uh, we discussion with our victim, uh, to take a look about what kind of content is inside the directory. And they verify and tell us that, uh, some source code is inside this directory and being stolen. Yeah. So we can conclude the file, the whole uh, storyline. Okay. And, uh, here is the summarize for their MITRE attack framework, uh, notation and also the IOC. Okay. So now we have summarized uh, our four instance and share the TTP and some more in this four instance. So next part, we want to discuss more uh, deeper. Why this attack will happen in the financial sector? How is the security situation in the financial sectors? Yeah. Uh, in our past image, we, we may think that the uh, financial sector may have a very good uh, security and they may have a lot of resource can buy a lot of start, uh, security product and ha have a lot of human research to do, uh, to do uh, security. Yet yeah. I think this is right in most cases, but uh, there are still have two problems here, uh, in our past experience. The first one is that in the financial sector, there are still have some endpoint that need to have a very high performance service. Uh, so for example, the uh, trading service and the system you use to buy and sell stock. Uh, for this system, uh, the higher, very high performance computation uh, is needed. So uh, they would not like to install any kind of security tool or the ED, for example, EDR inside this endpoint. So we can uh, monitor less of instant and also cannot quickly respond to this instant. And in some cases, the vendor uh, permit us to install the EDR, but they only let me to install the EDR on some uh, unimportant endpoint. The most critical one uh, for the uh, transaction uh, doesn't allow us to do this kind of installation. Yeah. So it limits our visibility and time to do the response. Okay. 
And the second problem is about the supplier. Uh, in Taiwan, there are few suppliers that can develop uh, the financial uh, software systems. Because to develop this kind of system, of course, you need, need to have a good uh, developer's quality. And the second, you need to qualify by the government. So in Taiwan, maybe there are only within five vend vendors that can develop this kind uh, of a software. So they nearly dominate the whole market share and do like to make any change. So uh, when the uh, bank, uh, they want to improve some security and they ask the supplier, the supplier will tell, tell them, no, I don't want to make a change. I don't want to make this uh, new feature. So this makes the supply chain proper again and worse. And the other problem is about the structure of a financial holding group. So because the financial uh, sector is very uh, complicated, so uh, every company cannot work stand alone. In most cases, uh, this financial company will be organized as a financial holding group. So for example, here is a sound structure about one financial holding group. Inside of this holding group, they may have some company for insurance, uh, some company for bank, and one company for the security. Yeah. And some company for the VC. So, uh, this structure make a, a spatial supply chain problem. Uh, lies that, uh, this company, uh, have an inconsistent security ability. But however, uh, the holding group, they want to, in, uh, improve the, uh, util, uh, the utilization about their resource. So, uh, this company may share some uh, IT infra, IT resource, and at least they will connect to each other for the quickly a uh, communication and change some information. Yeah. So, uh, but however, they connect together, but they don't have the same level uh, about security. So, for example, a bank is always have a more higher security level. Yeah. So every standard or the uh, policy will give a high requirement for the bank. Uh, but for the other company type, for example, a securities broker, the security requirement will relate very low. It's just a baseline. Yeah. So below is a ca real case study. Yeah. The bank, uh, one of our, uh, customer have discussion with us that they say, uh, their bank have a good security ability and resource. So they have enough human resource to review the RDP, uh, log every day. But however, uh, the securities companies inside the same uh, financial uh, group, they don't have this power to audit the RDP activities. So we can see they are the different uh, security level. And to make the things worse is about uh, compliance. Compliance, yeah. Uh, the uh, financial industry is a compliance driver industry. Yeah, uh, because you need to do the business for the financial, you need to get a permission from the government. So match the uh, compliance is a first priority job for them. And the compliance itself does not put uh, every type of financial company in the same level. So they, of course, they all, always put a higher level for bank and only give the best life for other type uh, of financial sector. So that makes the problem of the inconsistent uh, security ability between this kind of the vendor. So a taker can first compromise uh, the company company with a lower security uh, ability and use it as a jump site to get into the bank. So I, I think that's why the uh, supply chain problem is more serious in the financial sector. Okay, uh, in the end, we want to share something that we uh, our effort to enhance the supply chain security. But however, uh, this is not for the uh, financial sector, it's for the semiconductor uh, industry. Uh, in the past few years, we have joined the SEMI, uh, which is a global uh, organization uh, of uh, in, uh, semiconductor industry and push some security. So here is some, re uh, some report uh, and news uh, from the SEMI. So for example, we do one thing called the E1A7 standard. And in this standard, uh, we specify that when a new device is provided by the third party, provided by your supplier, need to import into your uh, company, import into your fab, 
you need to go through every kind of secure check, just like your internal server. Server. So that can somehow uh, ensure that this device can uh, reach a sim similar security level uh, to our internal system. And the second is the uh, service called uh, Cybersecurity Risk Rating Service. At least we are uh, trying to estimate the risk of, our, of every supplier we have. So we may try to analyze uh, how many passwords and credential leak from this supplier. Uh, are this supplier misuse the cloud storage? Uh, does this vendor has uh, been compromised by the info stealer and some information be selling in the dark web? Uh, somehow, and we're trying to calculate the security risk for the, uh, for the supplier. Okay. So, okay. So here is a takeaway about our today's, uh, presentation. So in first, we, uh, discussion, uh, the full type of supply chain. And we point, also point out that there are special kind of supply chain attack in the financial sector. Like the company is highly coupled together. They may link together. But however, their security ability is inconsistent. And we also disclose of four incidents uh, related to financial sector and from China's director. And we share some of their TTP and ILC. And finally, we also want to show that uh, we're trying to do the face forensic and we want to construct the core storyline so you can know uh, more easily to understand uh, the final intent of the directors and more easily to understand what kind of technique is used by the director. Yeah. So here is my presentation. And for now, it's a uh, Lunar New Year in Taiwan and China. So also Happy New Year to everyone. Yeah. And uh, do, we do we have the time for QA? No. <laughs> I think I, I a little exceed the time. Uh, but I will stay in the JC conference this two days. So welcome to come in. Come, come to find me and discuss some uh, research and uh, security problem. And uh, we also leave our email here, so you can reach me uh, by email or by Slack. Okay. So this is our presentation. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.